Welcome back. I finally figured out how to grow apples. You know, after all this experimenting with southern apples, experimenting in Florida, experimenting in Alabama, the trick is, is to outsource this for about eight years to somebody that actually knows what they're doing. That would be us. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise! So we're here at uh, Doug and Stacy's, and I was just the first thing we saw when we came in were the apples. Yeah. And these are uh, how many years old? They're about, about nine, ten. I keep. I, I, yeah, they're about nine, ten because we were here five or six or four before we planted them. Yeah, I guess and they that's took right. about nine. eight years yeah. ago. Nine, ten. Yeah. yeah. Probably. This guy at, here might be ten. Yeah. Two hundred pounds of apples, probably. Yeah. yeah. And then we put it's these right in front of our cabin, so when we harvest them, it's very easy to manage. We don't have to haul these apples because they're going to be heavy all the way back somewhere. So we have an outside kitchen right over here that we just take them to, and I make apple cider vinegar, I make applesauce and fermented apples and all that yummy stuff that you can do with apples. And we used to have a couple of pear trees when we were in Tennessee, and uh -huh. and that we found out that the uh, the lady that was living there, she told her kids, plant some of those flowering pear trees. I want some flowering pear trees. So they went down to the nursery and they said, we want some of those pear trees. And they gave them some actual, actual. good pears. So in the backyard, there were these two trees that just were dropping oh, these beautiful yeah. honey sweet dessert pears. And, uh, and they ended up giving pears to the entire neighborhood nice. instead of growing that. So we had them. We had the property for a few years and it was just baskets and baskets and baskets. We were doing that. Okay, we can make pear cider. Yeah. You know, I made pear liquor, did all kinds of stuff with it, sliced pears. Everybody got pears for Christmas. Yeah, yeah, pears that's good. grow pretty it. good here and they all do peaches very well. are good here too. The other pear that I love, and we've tried to plant it, it's just been crazy. We've had trouble with the pears. Like I have one left, is the Asian pear. Are yeah. you familiar with those? Yes, yeah, they're oh. nice, nice round it's dessert round. pear. It's a mix between like an apple and a pear, and yeah. they're so good, and that's one of my favorites, and I keep trying to get them to grow, and I'm having a little trouble. So <laughs> eventually, hopefully, I could get a couple. You wanna go wander around the garden? Sure. Yep. All right, so this is Rose of Sharon, you were telling me, and you eat them. Yes, Rose of Sharon is probably one of my favorite flowers. It has an incredible flavor, texture, and taste. So these flowers, they're edible, because it is in hibiscus family, the Rose of Sharon. And um, what they're I sweet. like, they're great. So I'll put them in salads, or if I have taco night, you can sprinkle them there. But one thing that's really good, you guys familiar with poppers? You know how you get jalapenos well, jalapeno and you stuff poppers, them. right. Yeah, so I kind of do the same thing with this. You can get the nice big flower. This isn't a very big one. But give me a big flower. And then you, you can stuff it with a cream cheese and, you know, spicy if you want to put some cayenne pepper in there. And then you could dunk them in, you know, breadcrumbs or however you want to do it, however you cook, and then you can just bake it. That's a great idea. And make idea. a little yeah, popper. Really exceptional. Aren't they great? Oh, I yeah, know a lot great. of the, um, a lot of your edible flowers, it's like, well, your flower's edible. Yeah, but, it but they don't like taste nothing. good. Nothing like a zinnia. Yeah, zinnia is like eating cardboard. <laughs> I don't like those, but I just love flowers. Uh, my other one is marigolds. I love marigolds mm -hmm. too. I like the flavor, and I like uh, marigold tea. Yeah, it's very yeah. pleasant. Yeah, no, this is this. I think this these might have to really be my good. favorite. Yeah, I will agree with you. And how how cold hard are these? Do they freeze down? Do they go to sleep? Or they come back again? Basically, it's just like a regular tree. The leaves and everything kind of you know drop a little bit, and they look like a little bunch of sticks. And then in the um, spring, they pop back up. And then they go and they're great we get it can be negative 10 here i mean it gets very cold here they're very hardy that's awesome yeah i'm gonna have to plant some and they come in different colors too so i love them multi multi-purpose what i like yeah so okay. we're coming around this is your your chickens this is a chicken coop yep and over here i have elderberry so we we really wanted you know uh, with our chickens to keep them healthy so it helps with coccidosis with the chickens to help them keep healthy it's fun to watch because when the elderberries are turning to elderberries as you can see right here you can tell the chickens they jump up we like to take and see how high they can jump and they go ahead and uh, they pick the berries off, and then that way they're getting their dose of, like, you know, their immune buster, I guess you could say. That's right. They're not going to get bird flu. And for a lot of you guys <laughs> that are getting the elderberries, don't forget about the flowers. So what I'll do is the flowers come first. They smell amazing. They make an incredible tea. An incredible tea. So I get them and dry them, and then I keep them and use them in teas, and they're wonderful. Yeah, I've seen them in bloom many, many times, and I have 
read that they make a nice tea, but I've never tried it. Wonderful. But. And it's good to mix with other teas. So that's a thumbs up with me. Over the years, you know how things like to just take over and they'll come and just start taking over? I started getting all this ragweed behind the barn. And it's like you, you get tired of pulling it and pulling it and pulling it. So I was doing some research, come to find out that this giant ragweed, and the ragweed used to be cultivated thousands of years ago. And so I did more research. I'm trying to think of other stuff for my sheep to eat. And so sheep will eat it. So I went ahead and I go ahead and I just chop it down and I give it to my sheep. So it has multifunction. It can make people sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> and you can feed sheep. And it. you can feed sheep. And there's another one right there. A lot of people think in the fall it's a, um, the goldenrod that makes everyone sneeze and, right. and all that. It's really the ragweed because they grow at the same time. So this is the culprit. Not the ragweed, those pretty goldenrod colors. Or not the, not not the, the goldenrod. Rod. It's yeah. the ragweed, yeah. So I use this to feed my sheep. So it's, it's, it's a good one. And then actually, I mean... I get it before it, it's getting ready to go to seed in a little bit. I'll try to get it before it goes to seed, and I'll, I've been starting to feed it to the sheep. I mean, look at how much biomass it is. Yeah, I love it. I, mean, I, it does, I mean, it looks fine, and I think I'm immune to it because we live around it all these years, and I've been letting it go. So So you were telling me that it's been really, really, had been really exceedingly dry to the point where your flowers were given up, and the grass was given up, and you were looking at buying hay and all these other things, yeah. and the rain has started to come in. Yeah, I mean, we were under a, the really severe, a severe, severe, severe drought. That's why I'm totally in shock. Everything was dying, and uh, over the past three weeks, we've gotten rain, and now everything's greening up, and everything's growing again really well. Um, it's beautiful. This looks like Thai basil. It is one of my favorites. I love the flavor. Oh, so do I. I love to, with all the garden produce, you know, you get all the vegetables and things. I love to put this in and make a nice stir fry, and then put it over some rice. It's incredible. And the smell is, is intoxicating, as well as it makes a good tea. Yes, my, uh, a friend of mine makes uh, kombucha, and she puts in Thai basil yes. as part of her kombucha. And it's like, wow, why does that taste so good? Yes. She's oh, that's Thai basil. Oh, well, I'm neat. I yep. love it. I do, too. Oh, I have my favorites. I have another basil that's over there. I'll show you in a minute. That's my second favorite. <laughs> this type of uh, ground covering, too, lasts a really, really long time. I've, I've used it quite a bit. It's one of my few, like... I guess allowances for modernity yes. occasionally. I have this in my nursery area. Oh it's... no, we love it. Well, actually what we did is we had rocks in here originally. We used old billboard tarp and then we put rocks, but that wasn't working very well. And yeah. so we just tore it all up. We're still in the process of redoing a lot of stuff around here. We're not totally done. And then we put this down and I love it. So how hard is your soil underneath here that you had to go up in beds? Did you do it for the ease and convenience? Or was it the soil is just too hard? And no, you no, we have beautiful soil here. Yeah, we have beautiful soil here. But no, I did it for yeah convenience for me. What I love about the raised beds, the higher ones, because I can sit here with my little rake, I can weed, yeah. and, and all that. And this is wonderful. And I'll stay out here. I can garden even if it's hot in the middle of the day, and I need to come out here. I have no problem coming out here. I just love it. So these are just a win for me. <laughs> yeah, it's very comfortable. But here's my other basil. This is, this is, you know what that is? Woo, it's so sharp. Very nice. It, it smells amazing. So what this Not is. Not sure which basil this is. Mm -mm. This is, they call it Tulsi or holy basil. And this is, mm. this is just amazing. It, it is really good for your nervous system. It helps calm you with stress. Um, they make tinctures out of it, teas out of it, but they, you'll hear it a lot more called Tulsi, T-U-L-S-I. And this one is, I think, above my Thai basil, big time, and I love it. The aftertaste of it is really, really nice. Yeah. It's got that little bite on the front end, and right. then your breath is fresh, you know. And usually, since it's we had this, minty. yeah, I get this, and it basically turns like the past few years. I've gotten it into a, a big tree almost, and then it bushes out. But from the drought, I think it was stressed a little bit. Um, so I'm hoping it gets bigger because it's absolutely beautiful. And then the great thing with my basils, all I do at the end of the season, I'll pull them out by the roots and I just go hang them in my greenhouse and then I just have millions of seeds for later. That's perfect. To gift to other people because this is a great one. You just throw your seeds around and they probably come back for you. Yeah, a lot of them I just, I'm a kind of what you call a lazy gardener. So a lot of my stuff I'll leave here and then I'll chop and drop, let it go, let it compost over it. And I don't clean up. Everyone has this immaculate garden. I am not like that. I'm just let it go and whatever happens. And if a tomato pops up next year, green pepper, I don't care. I might move it, but I just let nature do its work. 
Yeah, and I notice you get a lot less pest problems if you don't clean your garden up really nicely. Like yeah. it drives you nuts to, you know, it's like, oh, it's so messy. And there's a certain personality, like I can't stand that. But if there's sticks and old dead flowers and all that kind of stuff, that's why all your spiders right. and your bees right. and your wasps and all those guys are sleeping through, sure. waiting to start hunting in the spring. Yep, no, I'm all about it. I just, I'm, I'm real, I just, I'll leave it. I mean, my garden looks terrible all winter long, but I just, you know, we'll get ashes from the, um, stove I'll put them in here too or you know, whatever I got I'll just dump it in here too and then when it gets closer to gardening then I'll clean it up so yep works good perfect so you've got herbs mixed in everything is all mixed together you don't have nice neat rows of all one thing <laughs> everything's all together there's a cayenne pepper yeah it's cayenne pepper and this looks like Hungarian wax or one of those and you know what I, it's been crazy because of the drought they were so I you know I'm I love peppers and I had tons of peppers usually the peppers were terrible now just all of a sudden poof because of the rain they're looking great again so I'm so happy about that because I love my peppers and cayenne I love too because I do a lot of cayenne you know pepper powder uh, my favorite and, all around is cayenne yeah if I, I had to pick too. one pepper to save so stevia yep very nice. Does it come back for you? Or do you have to replant it? Every no. Year? What I do is I overwinter it because we're in zone six B here. So what I do is I bring, I always, I'll plant some usually in the garden, but then I'll also um, go ahead and put it in a pot. And then as the season gets cooler, you know, I may need to chop it down here and then I just overwinter it in the house. Perfect. And it, and it comes back. So I always keep one in a pot just for extra insurance. Where we are down in uh, in 8B, we're able to just, we kind of just throw a little bit mulch over it and then it re-sprouts again yeah, yeah. in the spring. And we've even had some of the cayenne peppers re-sprout from the base okay. in the spring because they're perennial. Yeah. But here, you know, it's an annual. Oops. It looks like a watermelon. Well, I, I already had some and they just produced a little because of the drought and they just got, it was kind of, it wasn't good. And now I planted some more, so hopefully I it'll make it through. Hopefully it'll make it in the fall. Yeah, so I'm... And then th this is just going wherever my butternut squash. I got some, they're growing over that way because a bunch of them died. I bet. I mean, it's like they can't get run and nothing can happen if they don't have water. That's the primary yeah. thing. Yeah. And that, it's so when it gets that hot, because we were having like over 100 degrees and the humidity was like almost 100%. It was just terrible. So nothing wants to do anything. But now everything's coming back. It's sort of like an early fall garden because I'm going to get ready. I got to do a lot of moving and grooving and get ready for my fall garden. So I love guineas, and I love chickens, and I love my turkeys. So they do fly in here. Not the chickens as much, but the guineas and the turkeys will come in here. So the turkeys will come in the spring, and they'll make a nest and lay their eggs, because I feel it's safe in here. So if you want to come over here and look, that's why I haven't cut my mint down. Usually I get a few cuttings, but then um, I'm only going to have two cuttings this year. If you can come over here and look. Look at that. There was a turkey nest in there. So, so did that's they guineas. Those are guineas. Those are guineas. So did they hatch out of here and then? 22. <laughs> she hatched out 22 little keeks. Yeah. That's and amazing. So, and that, that's why I didn't get my other cutting because I need to cut this down. But now I'm going to leave it because it, it's flowering. So I'll leave it for the pollinators and I'll just cut it a little later. And then I got, I got lots of little tips. You guys want to know a trick? To keep when you make tin, um, like tea, um, mint or spearmint tea, if you want to keep it, when you dry it out and you want to keep it green, you have to wait after the first couple frosts, then harvest it, dry it, and then harvest it, and it'll stay green when it's dry. Okay, so it's frozen the green in. Yes. The chlorophyll has stopped deteriorating. Yes. That's a little Amish trick that I, I no, learned. That's because neat. I could I would always harvest it early on, and then it always turned kind of blackish brown. And then I would see it at, at like some of the people's houses. I'm like, how do you keep it green? She goes, you got to wait for a couple frosts, and then it's perfect. No. These are blackberries. I have the biggest blackberries every year because they are thorned. Everybody wants the thornless because, you know, it's easier. But I'll just put on my gloves and long sleeves because I can get three regular blackberries to the, one of these and it's just so worth it. We used to have rows and rows of it. I have enough blackberries to give people, to ferment, to make wine with, to eat, to freeze, whatever, just from this row with these big blackberries, then, you know, a lot of people have bunches of rows. And I love these. Every year they do well. I was talking with a man, uh, there's a nursery in central Alabama called Petals from the Past. And he was telling me about their blackberries because they've got all these rows and all they have is, it's almost all Kiowa. 
which is one of the University of Arkansas right. selections, but it's the thorny one. And yep. he's got all these thorny yep. rows. And he said, look at they, the animals don't bother it nearly as much. Nope. He says, the vigor is so impressive. And he said, but the university, he says, I keep telling them every year, keep breeding more awesome thorny types. I'm all about it. And not I, the thornless, because you've selected out all of that vigor. They're beautiful. And every year they just keep getting better and better because I just love them so much. Because <laughs> they are. People, one year I had the grandkids come over and we get them like, it's big as your nose this year. It's big as your ear this year, but they're huge. Yeah, that's, a, that's a heck of a pair. Yeah, well, Doug, had, we had one one year because he's got a bigger hand and it like fit in the whole palm of his hand. It's crazy. It's like an apple. Yeah, yeah. They're great. Awesome. We're on the other side here with the sweet potatoes. You said they were Molokai. Yeah, those are Molokai sweet potatoes, which are the purple sweet potatoes from Hawaii. I, um, they are beautiful. They are. We, we did go to Hawaii many, many, many years ago. And when you drive through Hawaii, um, you know how a lot of people say, oh, I can't stand the dandelions or I don't like the ragweed or whatever because it's a noxious weed. Well, sweet potatoes in Hawaii are considered a noxious weed. <laughs> they are everywhere. They run down the highways. They're everywhere. And then when you go places, everything you get is the purple sweet potatoes. So I have been growing them every single year. And I will tell you, it is... It is an amazing potato. It's a cross between a regular like orange sweet potato and a regular potato potato. So it has a little bit more starchy taste to it. It's absolutely beautiful purple. And um, they're not, it's a, it's a longer tuber and it stores very well in the root cellar. Yeah. Like I still have some that I didn't use from last year that haven't even started sprouting down in the root cellar where I keep them cold. But they're always a good producer, whether we have too much rain or too much drought. And I love them. And then the other thing that's amazing about these guys is in the heat of summer, when your greens don't grow from the hot sun, these leaves are an incredible source of greens because you can saute them, you can eat them, um, and it makes a great, you know, in your stir fry with some onions, mix yes. them with some eggs, and it's incredible. So I like that. I greatly prefer them to regular spinach. Oh yeah. Like yeah, I, yeah. I would rather have sweet potato greens any day than spinach. Yeah. I always grow spinach and I don't eat it that much. So I, I yeah. do, I'm with you. you. Give it to the rabbits and yeah, I totally. eat the rabbits, you know. Yeah. And you're, you've got fennel here that's taller than you are. Yes. And, it, and then the pollinators adore this. I love the flavor of it. Let me try some. I should mix it with my blackberry. I haven't eaten it yet. Does it has a nice? Um, I should give you a littler piece. Zippy. The ones that are, you know, that's an old piece. The fresher, the younger ones are better. I don't know if that would be better. Better. But it kind of tastes, you know, licoricey. Mm -hmm. It's on your beard. Wipe it off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I love it when we were in California. Um, we were up, and I was seeing all these beautiful you know fennel and they grow wild and crazy all over the place and they're hardy and so i decided to go ahead and get some of the bronze fennel and i love it it comes back every single year so it self seeds or does it come back from the the base as a perennial as a perennial just it just yeah. re-sprouts again yeah. that's fantastic yeah. and it's in the same family as elderberry you yep. can tell by the <laughs> the umbrals that shape and it's beautiful and we get a lot of um, uh, caterpillars on ours. So oh, yes, I love them. They're beautiful. I love to watch them. They're very yeah. pretty. Yeah, oh, they're so beautiful. Yeah, and then also it's in the same family as dill. So you can still get the little worms, the little black and yellow worms. Yes. Yep. You're yeah. going to get a lot of uh, sweet potatoes out of here. So your uh, your bed is, um, ten, what is it, about eight, five, eight by five four? By eight by four? Something like that. Yeah. You reckon, I mean, with all this nice clear soil in here and how deep it is, you're probably going to get a, a nice big 50, 50, 100 pounds or something. Oh, no, I get a lot. And then yeah. that, that's regular, the, like, I think those are Bullergard potatoes over in that one. So, no, I get a lot of potatoes, enough to last Doug and I, you know, the whole year. So, that's, that's and then I got over here, I have, oh, I got, you know, what's this, brandy wine? I got some tomatoes. I'm a little jealous of the tomatoes. We don't, we don't do very well with them where we are. Yeah, they had stopped after, um, when it gets too hot, tomatoes don't produce. They don't turn, they'll stay green, but they don't turn red. So we started getting a little rain, and, and now they're starting, to, I'm starting to see 
you probably get if they live through you'll get a bunch more in the fall as they start to cool off and get to pleasant. oh you know the like this tomato plant yeah i'll keep producing and producing and producing and producing and actually this one's doing better because over in this cage here i have some black cherry tomatoes over here and look how pitiful they look because i didn't water those as much because i had to ration my water because we didn't have water in our cistern so i picked i delegated a few of my tomato plants that i could you know the ones keep you really love so, but I love these. These have produced all summer. They just don't look that great. So I got plenty of plenty of tomatoes for salsa and tomato sauce and just to eat. And you have banks like along the edge here. You've got all these weeds and some useful plants and everything mixed in. This is all also space where you're where you can pick wild greens out of here. Well, those are prickly. These are the the I spiny pigweed. That's what we call them like down those. south. Yep. They're terrible. Well, and generally, this is actually. I, we let this go. I'm gonna do something here, make this into a bed. I was, I've been throwing compost in there, um, but this is the doorway for us to get in and out. So I have to clean this. You gotta out. clean your door. <laughs> right now, this is just a great place for the predators and the pollinators yeah, to hang yeah, out. Yeah. Extra space. Oh, I just leave it off. And actually, yeah, we're. Um, and I also have a lot of peppermint that's been growing it crazy everywhere. I gotta. I did an experiment this year. I got peppermint, and I had peppermint all around my tomatoes, and I put the tomatoes in the middle. Because they said it could help the flavor of the tomatoes. And I'm, I have to say that these, you want to try one? Tell yes. me what you think. Yeah. This is a little a black, black cherry. cherry. What do you think? Even though they are. Oh, it's really explosive. It's like. Yeah. That's a lot of tomato yeah. in there. Yeah. And I really. That's not what I expected. <laughs> and wow. I, I think that they taste a lot more vibrant than they normally do. But I think it might be because of the mint. So. That is literally, that is one of the most explosive. It's my favorite tomato. Toma you know what it almost tastes like when you, you know, when you cook your tomatoes down and you make your own sauce mm -hmm. and you put a little wine in it, a little salt, maybe a little kelp meal or something, and you cook it down to about half. Right. And then the flavor's like, wow, that's so sharp. This tastes like that. It's good. Yeah, they like are. Concentrated good. tomato flavor. Yeah. They're good. Oh, well, that's really good. Now, have you grown them a year before without the mint and then? No, I have grown them. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This year, I just really it started coming up in, on in the cracks here, so I just let it go, and I then I tried it, and it seemed to work. So I'm interested to see what would happen if I had a, not a drought, and see how good they would be. Because yeah. normally these will grow and keep going until it gets freezing out, and then they'll just keep producing. And That's why I'm shocked. This whole thing normally is filled with just that. Well, yeah. I mean, not water is the primary limiting factor on just about everything. Right. I have not grown mallow before. So mallow is, is got a beautiful flower. I need to trim this back, but I had guineas back here too, <laughs> laying the eggs. This is a great thickener. So, you know, instead of people put flour and stuff in their soups and stews, it's kind of has a very gelatinous kind of gooey. And, and you can put, here's a flower. You can put it in your soups and stews and it kind of helps it thicken it up. Better than uh, genetically modified cornstarch. Yeah. And then oh, actually, like I'm so excited. I, I don't know if you guys will be excited about this, but I love mullein, and I've had a really hard time trying to have it grow. You can mm -hmm. find it along the sides of the roads and all that because right. it's really good for your respiratory system, and I wanted to have it kind of close by. So I threw a whole bunch of seeds in here like early, early on in the season, and it was dry, and now look at them. They're, I just, they, they're all coming up. They're popping up on their own. Yeah, I got way too many, but... Look at all those little baby seeds. All that greenery. Finally, we got rain, and they're they're growing after how many months? I think I maybe put them in in May, and now they're yeah. popping up. And they always say it it is a it is a weed of disturbed ground. Yes. So a broken up garden area kind of plants itself. It's like if you want things to grow, they yeah. don't necessarily no. do it. No. But no, I'm I'm very happy about that. So if I get one or two plants, I'm great. <laughs> well, this is tons of uh, tons of food and medicine for. You know, for just two people here too, you've got just overflowing abundance. Well, and the other thing is, is not just in my garden. I know, like around everywhere, I have my where I have Jerusalem artichokes somewhere. I know where I have a lot of sumac. You know, I I, I have things all over the property where I know I can go get it. So I just leave it undisturbed, and I don't necessarily have to have it in here. So, yeah, that's all yeah. like a food bank in the ground. Yeah, and I just go on my little walks, and I find what I need, and I know where to go and get it, and it, it works out good. That's awesome. So we're out of the garden right now, and as we were walking back towards the house, I said, I love these zinnias. They're just amazing. 
And what I started doing, I just like to throw things around and see what happens and what pops up. So a few years ago, I threw some kind of in the rocks because my marigolds will pop up out of the rocks too. And then you don't have weeds, but you have flowers. So I kind of like that. So I had it against here and I thought, shoot, I would like a whole bunch of them all over. So I started, I'll throw the seeds out very early in the season. Well, the female um, turkeys love to scratch and they're strong. And so they scratch all of the seeds out <laughs> this way where the walkway is and, and this was your this walkway. was my walkway but and it looks so pretty i don't want to do anything with it but i love zinnias they're just a wonderful addition and then you can have fresh cut flowers all summer long <laughs> and then over here i have we're in the process of redoing this all over here but i have some tansy and i have black eyed susans and then i have lemon balm some of it i've cut back i gotta cut more but the lemon balm for any of you guys that don't have it nearby is incredible. It makes an incredible addition for that lemoning flavor to your teas, adding it to like some of your cooking that you're using. But I, I just love it because it's right by the door. So when I go out and it's maybe nighttime, I'll just rub it on my skin as an ant, like an insect repellent or rub it on my clothes and it's the best bug repellent ever. Okay, does it keep the ticks off, you think? Um, well, it might. It might, I don't know. But just the mosquitoes are usually, when, as soon as it gets to dusk, the mosquitoes just want to carry you off. Right. No, I and know. They, what you and mean. they don't like that. No, That's it's useful. just a good, yes, it's very useful. I have some in like my that. garden, but I haven't used it for yeah. that before. Peppermint, I mean, anything you can just grab and rub on you. It's non toxic. I like it. It's so, awesome. Yep. Yeah. And it's raining. We all need a little rain. Love it. I can take my, my shower or my bath now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for showing us around. Sure, I, I had a lot of fun. It. Yeah. We'll get out of the rain. Thank you. Be sure to subscribe to Doug and Stacy's channel, Off Grid with Doug and Stacy. I will put a link below. If you don't know who they are, you should. Catch you all next time. All right, and see until you later. then, your thumbs always be green. Or they can be purple. With black hair. Yeah. Well, cut through. The storm knocked my sunflowers down. <laughs> Sorry. I'd like to see my pregnant wife do that. Can you make it? Can you make it? <laughs> She's like the National Geographic camera woman. <laughs> I do have something for you that I think you'll like, that I can send home with you. It's in, it's in our outside kitchen. It's a variety of uh, zucchini called zucchini rampicanti. You think I'll actually like that?